New leadership is fresh on the menu over at Restaurant Brands. The Burger King, Tim Hortons, and Popeye's owner announcing COO Joshua Cobza is set to become CEO effective March 1st. This as the company tries a major turnaround over at Burger King. Joining us now to discuss is Patrick Doyle, Restaurant Brands Executive Chairman. Patrick, uh, it has been a while. Good to, good to see you here. Before we even dive into this turnaround you're trying to pull off here at, at Restaurant Brands, notably Burger King, I just want to be clear. You have $3 million of your own money tied up into this for five years. Is that right? 30. $30 million. <laughs> Why? Even more. I, Why? I am all in. All right. Why I is it so important in. to do that? <laughs> because I really believe in the opportunity here. It's an amazing business, amazing brands. You know, you mentioned BK and I'll and I'll get to that. But, you know, the biggest business we have today from a cash flow standpoint is is Tim's. Um, and uh, Tim Hortons is an amazing business in in Canada. It was up double digit comps in the fourth quarter, um, doing really well. The international business is great. Popeyes is great. Firehouse, pretty new. So we're still relatively small, but feel really good about it. And then you've got Burger King in the U.S., iconic brand, amazing business, has struggled somewhat, but is getting some momentum. I mean, the Reclaim the Flame program they put in place uh, in September, I think is starting to show traction, did a five comp in the fourth quarter. So things are working through. We've got some franchisees with balance sheets that we've got to help them work through, but uh, I'm, I'm optimistic. It's still early days there, but progress is being made. The rest of the business is uh, is really strong. All right, I, I apologize for leaving off a zero. I apologize for that. Okay, <laughs> that's that's right. thirty minutes a lot different than three minutes. Okay, so let's drill down to Burger King. Lots of uh, lots of talk about on that uh, the brand on the conference call. Now I remember in 2014 when we talked, and you said over at Domino's when you were engineering that turnaround, Brian. I'm I'm just going to focus on making a better sauce. I'm not going to put stuff on the menu that is not going to sell. I'm going to stay focused. Is that yep. the playbook you're going to run at Burger King? Take things off the menu, improve ingredient quality. Yeah, so you know what, the, the amazing thing, I mean, if you look at, at everything across the burger category, all that Burger King has today as, as its asset is the Whopper. We've got the best burger in the category, and that's a lot to work with. We got work to do on our assets, we got work to do on our speed of service, there are lots of things we, we frankly, I mean, you, you heard me talking about this yesterday. You know, we've got to improve the franchisee profitability and the, the cash on cash returns of building these restaurants. But we've got the Whopper and the Whopper is the best burger in the category. It's terrific. It's iconic. Um, frankly, the Whopper brand is as big or bigger than the Burger King brand. So if we start from there and the strength of that product build out from there. We're going to have great success. There's going to be variety on the menu, but the but the Whopper is central to the success that we're going to have with this business. Patrick, it's Julie here. Um, besides your turnaround uh, over uh, with pizza, I also think about the famous um, uh, Olive Garden salting the pasta water, right? These, these tweaks that people come in and make on the operational ground floor level. Besides the Whopper, are there any particular dishes that you're focusing on and really raising the profile of alongside the Whopper? Yeah, look, we, we've got an amazing team working on, on a variety of things across the brands, but it is interesting. If, if I look at the commonality of these four businesses, these four brands, it's great food. Um, you know, all you've got to do to get people to become a regular Popeye's customer is give them the Popeye's sandwich. Bone-in chicken is amazing, uh, but you give them that that now iconic uh, chicken sandwich, and they are going to come back over and over. We've just got to execute on that on a on a regular basis. You look at Firehouse; I think the food there is terrific, and Tim's, um, you know, is is beloved in Canada, spreading from there into the U.S. But it's really about the just good, honest coffee and food and so this is the commonality across these four businesses is great food. 
that's going to remain central and everything we can do to make that better and more consistent is what's going to drive the results. I'm not sure how you got access to my order history for delivery, <laughs> but uh, you certainly hit me hard on this chicken sandwiches, Patrick. I appreciate it this morning. But look, you, you look across the brands here. Tim Horton's crushing it on the breakfast wars. Popeye's also crushing it on the virality over the past few years of one product and then being able to iterate off of that. But now looking forward, what would you say as every kind of executive that steps into a new role like this would have their three months, six months, one year targets that they would like to hit? What would you deem a successful first year in this new role and on which targets being struck? Yeah. So if, if we've got everybody focused on the, the success in the stores, the success of the restaurants, the franchisees, profitability, if we are growing that, if the franchisees are feeling good about the return on investment that they get uh, in their restaurants, they're going to reinvest, they're going to re-image, they're going to build new restaurants. That's going to be true across all of the businesses, including, um, importantly, into the international business, which is where you're likely going to get the vast majority of uh, of restaurant count growth, getting a lot from Popeyes, but otherwise, primarily that's going to be a, an international uh, growth story. If everybody is focused on that, driving success there, great operators are going to bring capital and their time into these businesses. That's what's going to generate accelerated growth. So that's what we're all getting focused on. Watch those franchisee profitability numbers. We're disclosing them uh, publicly now as of yesterday. If those are trending the right way, the business is going to follow. We're going to generate great returns for our shareholders. Patrick, there's a couple of Burger Kings by me that uh, they're, they're tired looking. Uh, they have yep. not changed much, much over the past decade. And to the point where I, I don't really want to walk into them, to be perfectly honest with you. Are, yep. are you hearing franchisees, do they have to knock these, some of these locations down and, and rebuild from scratch? And that's part of the Reclaim the Flame program. So some of them, you know, we do need to start from scratch. And we like what we're getting back from the franchisees on understanding some of them. We do need to scrape and rebuild. And that gets us the highest lift on sales. But the reason, Brian, that you should walk into that Burger King, even though it looks tired, is inside that Burger King is a Whopper. <laughs> well, Patrick, you I'm, I'm only going to walk in there. Looks nicer. Patrick, they don't have the Whopper, yeah. Brian. Patrick, I'm only going to walk in there because I know you have thirty million dollars on the line. You're one of the first <laughs> CEOs to actually talk to me in a broom closet in 2014. So that's the only reason I'm going in there. But the Whopper. That's too. true. The Whopper is in there, Brian. That's the thing you got to okay. remember. Fair enough. <laughs> Pat Patrick, I'm honestly just thankful that my microphone is not one foot lower because you would hear my stomach growling right now. <laughs> Patrick Doyle, Restaurant Brands Executive Chairman, thanks so much for joining us here this morning. We appreciate it.